Hey, Marcus Conti reporting. It's cold in New York. <laughs> Try to do a little walkie-talkie before my phone crashes. So what's going on in the world, man? Uh, I just keep, you know, of all the stories that come about, I just keep thinking Venezuela is the story of our lifetime, right? I mean, some of us have seen, you know, Nicaragua and the, the you know, the Sandinistas and the Iraq, the, you know, the, the, the uh, overthrowing of Iraq. Saddam Hussein, I heard his neck crack, remember? And now we're seeing the same nonsense go on in Venezuela, right out in the open, right in plain view. Right in front, in the name of patriotism. That's the most interesting part of what's going on there. I want to talk about that. So right now you got massive regime change, gross, in, gross illegal U.S. interference in, you know, in foreign government's internal affairs. Right? You have them freezing their bank accounts. You got them playing like banker games, like, you know? freezing their accounts so that they can't take out their money that they made in the U.S. It's crazy times, you know. So who's running the show? You got Mike Pompeo, a CIA spook, right? It's a CIA operation, right? If anybody's doubting if this is, if what's, what the United States is doing in, in, in Venezuela is not an orchestrated military coup, orchestrated by the Central Intelligence Agency in the United States, then you're, you're definitely missing something at this point in the game because that's precisely what it is. It's about oil. It's about resources. It's about globalization. And anybody who supports the move there supports globalization. That's who you guys are. I mean, look, empathy can only go so far. I'll just, I'll just put this on the record. I, I've been empathetic to the to the 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 patriots that voted for Trump and believe in Trump and believed in Trump. But you got to remember who the, who the names in this in this play are, and they are Mike Pompeo, as CIA spook, straight up CIA spook. Right? He was the leader of the CIA. You got this other guy, Elliot Abrams, is also a CIA spook. Right? He's the guy from. Uh, he was involved with Nicaragua and El Salvador, right? Under Bush, under Reagan. Right? These are all these are all spycraft guys. That's who that's who that's who Trump's surrounding himself with. Trump, Pence. You've got also, you know, Steve Mnuchin, see is the is the Goldman Sachs guy. Goldman Sachs guy, Secretary of of the Treasury. You got fucking Jewish New York in, in their pocket. Right? That's Trump's swamp, right? He's constraining the swamp. What did he do? He replaced it with the other swamp. Right. Who else? You got Marco Rubio. You got Debbie Wasserman Schultz and, you know, drumming up the anger in Florida. <clears throat> the Venezuelans that defected. Right? So that's who the coup is. That's who's orchestrating the coup. You got 5,000 troops. You got Bolton, the, the, the mustache man, who slipped and said didn't slip, but put in the, in the mind stream that there's 500 troops, 5,000 troops lined up in Colombia, ready to storm the beaches of Venezuela. All in the name of democracy, right? That's what it's all about, because the United States said Maduro did not hold the fair elections, despite the entire uh, uh, com the international community that witnessed it said, that they did have a fair election. And even if they didn't, that's no, that's, we don't have fair elections in America. Who the hell are we to say, hey, you, gotta, you guys have to have fair elections. <laughs> we have the most corrupt, uh, you know, we vote on antiquated machines. Well, we, we know that. That's, that's not the reason. The reason is that it's the troika, the, the <laughs> troika, is that the word? <laughs> the, the, the troika of evil, of tyranny, right? That's China, Russia, and the United States. 
Look, we already know the facts. I've done 10 videos on this thing, you know. Here's a good quote. It's funny how people think they have a divine right to preach at you and navigate your life once your income falls below a certain level. <laughs> that's Orwell. I twisted it a little bit. <laughs> but that's uh, Orwell from Down and Out in Paris and London. Uh, one of his first books. He said that he explored poverty. And people leave you alone when you're, you know, when you have money, no one's going to step in and tell you how to, how to do your business. But once you, once you hit that poverty level, boom, everybody's telling you what to do, you know? What I want to say is this, and, and I'll wrap it up. I'm going to make this quick because these phones freeze up. They, the battery goes down to zero, like, in quickly. <laughs> so, but the most important part of this is I am seeing some promise. I've always said, and I've always held to the notion that, that the change comes from the bottom up. Now, again, there's still people caught in the, in the paradigm of left and right, socialist, communist, uh, capitalist, we're patriots, we're, we're right wing, we're left wing, we're, we're populist, right? And, and wh whatever, I mean, that's, that's where my empathy is starting to run out, where people like to tag people with certain names. But what you're actually doing is playing right into the hand of the, uh, the oligarchy once again. See, what's going on in Venezuela, when you, when you support a coup in Venezuela, when you support the United States' move to go into a sovereign nation and take their resources and implant a CIA operative, Juan Guardo, and replace their elected, elected president, Nicolas Maduro, you put that CIA operative in there who's friendly with our CIA, and, and why are they doing it? Not to save the people, but to expand the globalism, to get the corporations in there. You heard Bolton in his own words. It's all about the oil. You got Muchin, they're freezing accounts. They're freezing the, the uh, Venezuelan accounts. They're trying to starve out the people, right? So the Venezuelan people are fighting for their sovereignty. They're fighting for their freedom. They're fighting for, they're fighting against globalism to be globalized by the, by the corporations that have us and everybody in Europe and, and most of the free world by the balls, right? Venezuela is holding out. And what do they get labeled? They're tyranny, right? right? Look, this, we got to talk about the solution is what I'm trying to say, right? The solution is, in my view, it's antitrust law, laws on these corporations, but it's, there's a lot more to it. The way to start is to jack up their tax on the corporations making more than $20 million a year. Publicly traded corporations and banks. banks Jack their tax up to 80%, 80% deflate them, and then start to, you know, start to work on campaign finance law, right, and get legitimate politicians in. Now, I know that's socialism, right? Whenever, whenever, when I say tax, you say socialism. When I say tax, you say socialism. Right? Well, when I say tax the corporations that uh, $20 million or more, you say, you're going to tax me too. Right? That's, that's what you say. Right? Fall into that and watch your country get taken away from you. Well, it's already been taken away from you. But watch your, watch your, watch your children and your grandchildren be put further into uh, uh, abject poverty and slavery. Enjoy yourself. Keep throwing those terms around. Right? Because that's all it gets you. So the, the Venezuelan people are fighting against globalism. And the jerk-off media in, in our country and the jerk-offs online that, that are, are echoing the Fox News talking points are contributing to the problem. And that's where my, my empathy and respect runs out. I have no respect for these people. I will shit on them, piss on them, call them names. Fuck you. Debate you? Why? I don't debate. I don't debate criminals and, and, and conspirators, right? You want to debate? Fuck you. Make, make, your fucking, make your fucking video, jerk off. All right? So, so, the, so, the, so the Venezuelan people, I digress. The Venezuelan people are fighting for their, for their independence. The, the people of France wearing yellow vests, 
are fighting to oust the oligarchy, right? You see how both, both, both of the, 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 the risings up, right? Well, it's not really a rise up in Venezuela. They're trying to take their land, right? And the people, the 32 million people of Venezuela, we haven't really heard them speak yet. We've only heard a very small number of people stand up. But if you invade their country, you bet your ass they're going to speak up. Right? So the people of Venezuela are uh, voted for no oligarchy. The people of France are, are actively boycotting now the 12th week, Act 12 in France, to oust the oligarchy. And the jerk-off media and the jerk-off online press in our country is denouncing both of those moves and supporting the oligarchy. So if you are a pro-coup, American coup in Venezuela, then you are a globalist. You suck the dick of the major corporations in America and you want to increase the swamp and you are not patriotic. You are about as anti-American as you could come, as you can be, right? If you support the establishment, what is now like red shirts or something in France, that are opposing the yellow vest movement, that has a 70% 70, 70 approval rating in France. 70% of the people in France want the oligarchy the fuck out of their country. And, and, and Macron, their president, is that no one's listening. The international community doesn't want to hear it. Why? Because they are the establishment. They are, they are the, the problem, right? So that's just food for thought in the morning. Just know what side you're on. I, I'm encouraged that there's a couple of people online, a couple of uh, YouTube bloggers that have put on the yellow vest. And that's a good, that's a good sign. People that are calling themselves, once called themselves, or are calling themselves patriots, are now seeing the value in simple yellow vest. Now, I've been saying it all along that that's the way to go. All-out boycott. That's happening in France starting February 5, right? A people's movement is what we're talking about. Not waiting for politicians, corrupt politicians, or, or compromised politicians to change anything. They'll respond when 10 million people rise up, 20 million people walk the streets, 50 million people demand that, that, the shit, that the shit stops. But in the solution, there must be solution, and that is to elevate the tax and deflate. You must deflate the billionaires and the, the corporate, the corporate uh, culture. Marcus Conti reporting.